This week on Jerusalem Dateline, millions of Israelis take shelter as Islamic Jihad fires hundreds of rockets into southern Israel. Will a shaky ceasefire take hold? Plus, Turkey's President Erdogan visits President Trump at the White House. Trump says a ceasefire in northeast Syria is holding, but those on the ground tell a different story. And CBN's Orphan's Promise lends a helping hand. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. Israel targeted a top Islamic Jihad leader who they said was responsible for rocket attacks on Israel and called him a ticking time bomb. In response, the Iranian-backed group in Gaza fired hundreds of rockets into Israel. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl has that story. Mission accomplished. That's what Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said of the three-day military operation against Gaza. The goals of the operation have now been fully achieved. The goal of the operation was to target the commander of the Islamic Jihad in the Gaza Strip. He was eliminated, along with dozens of terrorists and dozens of important Islamic Jihad infrastructure targets. Our enemies got the message. We can reach anyone, even in their beds. The latest round of violence started with Israel's assassination of senior Islamic Jihad official Abu Alata in a targeted airstrike on Gaza. Israel said he was responsible for most of the rocket attacks on Israel over the last year and was planning other imminent terror attacks. Israel struck a ticking bomb. An arch terrorist working under Iranian instructions and with Iranian funding to plan and carry out terrorist attacks against Israel. Israel doesn't want any escalation, but we will not hesitate to defend our citizens. Here in Ashkelon, just six miles from the Gaza border, life is beginning to return to normal. One home here suffered a direct hit, and a woman was moderately injured from flying glass. But without the Iron Dome and shelters in most homes, the casualties and damage would be much worse. All those interceptions are miracles. If we could only imagine where those missiles would have fallen, on cars, on houses, on shopping centers. And of course, every time we hear this red collar warning, we miss a heartbeat, especially the kids. Israeli communities within 25 miles of the Gaza Strip were shut down for four days as Islamic Jihad launched some 450 rockets at Israel that went as far north as Tel Aviv. Israel said the Iron Dome missile defense system was 90 percent successful in intercepting rockets heading for populated areas. Half of Israel, including Israel's second largest city, Tel Aviv, was closed down during the first day of attacks. I'm waiting for good solu solution, I hope, for everybody, for the Arab, for the Jews, for the world. Palestinians said more than 30 were killed, including several children and a family. Israel said most of those killed were militants. But these terrorists are not only out to kill Israelis, in fact, they're killing their own people in Gaza. At the cost of every rocket they shoot, they could have built another Gazan classroom. After two days, Islamic Jihad announced that it had agreed to a ceasefire. We confirmed that a ceasefire deal was reached under the supervision of Egypt. After the ceasefire was announced, terrorists continued to launch sporadic rocket fire against Israel for nearly a day, and the IDF carried out one last airstrike in Gaza. We made it very clear that we are not looking for escalation and that quiet will be answered with quiet. For now, it seems that the violence will subside, but how long the ceasefire will last remains to be seen. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Ashkelon, Israel. In Washington, Turkish President Recep Erdogan visited President Trump at the White House. From many in Washington and the Middle East, more than a month after a Turkish invasion of northeast Syria, there's growing concern about the ongoing U.S. relationship with Turkey. While some hope President Trump would deliver hard truths to Turkish President Erdogan, instead, he got high praise. I'm a big fan of the president, to tell you that. At the White House, President Trump also praised the ceasefire inside northeast Syria. Today, the ceasefire continues to hold, and I know that the ceasefire, while complicated, is moving forward and moving forward at a very rapid 
clip. Yet on the ground, aid workers told a different story. Well, there's been constant fighting since the invasion. There's never been a ceasefire, not one day. Airstrikes by drones, regular airstrikes, artillery, mortars, Turkish tanks. A number of international human rights groups have also cited Turkey for war crimes during its invasion. At the press conference, one reporter asked President Erdogan about the plight of Christians who have suffered during the invasion. The ones remaining on the side of the Syrian territory will see their worshipping practices restored and revived in a special manner. They are receiving health care, they are receiving humanitarian aid in every aspect possible. My name is Omar Firaz. Yet this Christian leader in the Syrian city of Kobani tells a different tale. Under the pretext of fighting against the Kurds, a lot of churches have been targeted and destroyed, and many Christians were forcibly displaced from their hometowns. Something is happening in Turkey that I hope President Trump and President Erdogan had a very frank discussion on. Given the abuses during its ongoing invasion, human and religious rights abuses inside Turkey, and a NATO member buying Russian military equipment, Senator James Lankford questioned the future of the Turkish-U.S. relationship. We've had an economic relationship, a military relationship, a genuine friendship with Turkey, but we do not know who Turkey is anymore. We don't recognize the Turkey of today from Turkey five years ago. After weeks of fighting, here's a look at some of the results of the Turkish invasion that some say is a catastrophe for the region and has profoundly affected the lives of millions. The day Turkey began bombing and invading northeast Syria, it made a promise to the United States. The White House stated, Turkey has committed to protecting civilians, protecting religious minorities, including Christians, and ensuring no humanitarian crisis takes place, and we will hold them to that commitment. Eyewitnesses, including humanitarian groups, testify Turkey has broken each vow. According to Amnesty International, Turkish forces displayed a shameful disregard for civilian life, carrying out serious violations and war crimes. World Magazine's Mindy Belts is in the region and tells CBN News of first-hand accounts of atrocities. Numerous refugees described for me have men having their hands tied behind their backs, seeing them beheaded. I had several reports of the beheadings and people cut in the streets and burned. These are war crimes. This is just an incomprehensible and seemingly senseless way of creating what Turkey calls a safe zone. Belt says Christians were a specific target. One of the Syrian refugees that I spoke to, and this was a, a Muslim, went out of his way to explain to me that what he saw was particular targeting of Christians. Turkish ally, the Syrian National Army, has marked the Arabic letter N on Christian homes for confiscation, just as ISIS did only a few years ago. But this is the first time that it is happening under sanction of a NATO ally. It seems like a complete betrayal of our alliances here in this region, and it seems like a betrayal even of our Christian brothers and sisters. The humanitarian crisis is overwhelming, with Northeast Syrian hospitals running out of supplies. The International Red Cross reports nearly half a million people may soon be without clean water after Turkish bombers took out a key pumping station. Hundreds of thousands of refugees have fled this chaos and violence, with thousands flooding into neighboring Kurdistan. There, CBN's Operation Blessing and its partner, the Barzani Charity Foundation, are helping the refugees, including 160 Christian families. We're providing hot meals, boxes of food for the families, and the most needed relief that they need right now. Food, shelter, so needed. These families, they lost everything again. CBN News has learned this key city, Tel Tamar, faces defeat with Turkish-backed forces closing in. Analysts backed up by internal sources tell us it could jeopardize the Syrian Democratic Forces, the SDF. That could lead to the escape of countless ISIS prisoners and a resurgence of the Islamic State. CBN News has also learned Turkish forces are massing near the city of Kobani. Dalton Thomas of Frontier Alliance International met with this Christian leader in Kobani and heard his plea. Our lives are at risk. The reason is because we believe in Jesus. 
Christians around the world, and especially American Christians, should push their government to make a decision to protect us because our lives are truly in danger. Coming up, the European Union rules against businesses within Israel's biblical heartland. When we come back. Roman soldiers destroy the Second Temple of Jerusalem. Centuries of eyewitnesses say the temple treasures survived. But where are they? They went from Jerusalem to Rome, Rome to Carthage, Carthage to Byzantium. Historians are silent about what happened to it next. CBN Documentaries presents the worldwide release of Treasures of the Second Temple. So does it still exist today? A story of mystery. Where is it? Calamity. Most of the victims were butchered. And destiny. The possibility to dig is impossible. Get your copy of Treasures of the Second Temple. Yours for a gift of any amount to CBN Documentaries. This holiday season, take a spiritual journey through the biblical stories of Christmas. In CBN's free devotional, Advent of the Messiah, you'll be amazed at how God's Word comes alive. Draw closer to Jesus this Christmas season and experience His presence as Emmanuel, God with us. Get your free copy of Advent of the Messiah. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash advent for your free devotional. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit cbnnewschannel.com. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm going to teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series. On the same day Islamic Jihad started launching rockets at Israel, the European Union's highest court launched what many are calling an attack against the Jewish state. They say it's only a stepping stone to the boycott, divestments, and sanctions movement and will lead to anti-Semitism. Here's that story. Israel quickly condemned a ruling from the European Union's top court that products from the so-called West Bank cannot carry the Made in Israel label. The indication of origin of the products originating in Israeli settlements must be correct and not misleading to the consumer. Reaction was swift morning, and widespread. Danny Danone, Israel's UN world, ambassador, saying, statement. this is another example of Europe continuing its surrender to Israel's enemies. The EU's discrimination against the Zionist enterprise will provide legal cover for anti-Semitism. Israel strongly rejects the recent ruling of the European Court of Justice, which has one aim and one aim only, and that is to signal out Israel and to apply double standards against it. Expressing deep concern, the U.S. State Department said the ruling suggested anti-Israel bias. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu credited Secretary of State Mike Pompeo for providing clarity, something Europe clearly failed to do. As Europe the other day decided to act against Israel uh, and against uh, and to uh, put uh, labels 
on uh, products that are made here, uh, they don't join exactly the sanctions against Iran, they join sanctions against Israel. Unbelievable. PLO's Hanan Ashwari welcomed the labeling decision as a first step. We believe the, the, the real thing that should happen, uh, the only just thing, is not to import these uh, settlement products and produce in the first place. Professor Gerald Steinberg of the NGO Monitor condemned the decision, calling it a gateway drug towards boycott, divestment and sanctions. Israel Gantz, head of the group governing the Israeli settlements, doesn't believe the ruling will hurt businesses. The product here is of high standards. Everyone wants to produce, Jews and Arabs. There is demand in the markets, and therefore, besides this miserable decision, I hope and estimate there will be no impact. Boycotts of Israeli companies in the West Bank often backfire, hurting Palestinians more than the intended targets. Case in point, SodaStream. CBN News has documented the company's success and its employment of some 500 Palestinians, paying them four times the salary likely provided by Palestinian employers. Attacked for years by the BDS movement, SodaStream eventually moved operations inside Israel, costing most of the Palestinians their jobs. For now, Israel can only wait and see if the new ruling has any impact. Up next, a mother's plea for her son's remains. Now, for a limited time, you can get five of CBN's critically acclaimed documentaries. Experience the rebirth of the modern state of Israel. A historic bond between the Jewish people and the land of Israel cannot be broken. Relive the battle for Jerusalem in the Six-Day War. Jerusalem is yours forever. Discover how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. When people need us, we volunteer and we come and help. Explore the world of Israeli technological innovation. We're people of dreams. God gives us dreams. And that's really the roots, I think, of, of much of our innovation. And understand the biggest land dispute in history. Many Palestinian Arabs claim that the Jews stole Arab land. But is that the real story? This exclusive Israel DVD collection can be yours for a gift of $40 or more. Call now or go online to get your Israel DVD bundle today. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board certified neurologist and number one New York Times bestselling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can and I'm gonna show you how along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD only from the Christian Broadcasting Network, featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection in Protect Your Brain. Get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD Protect Your Brain and get it today. One of the deepest values of the Jewish faith is to bury one's dead. That's even more poignant for this mother who lost her son in the 2014 Gaza war Israel fought against Hamas. And still, she cannot say her final goodbye. Hadar means glory in Hebrew, and Hadar Golden was indeed his parents' pride and joy. Losing him was difficult enough, but not being able to give him a proper burial is almost too much to bear. It's why the family came here to the United States with the help of the Israeli embassy to try and make some headway. It's heartbreaking. The pain in this Israeli mother's eyes is evident as she talks about her son, Hadar Golden. She says he was always smiling. Smiling from the inside. His most characteristic thing was to see the good things in everything. In Hebrew, we say you have bad eye, ein ra, and you have good eye. He had the good eye. Hadar joined the Israeli army and in August of 2014, he was in Gaza as part of Operation Protective Edge. Hamas had launched missiles into Israel. His mother says two hours into a ceasefire, 
he was ambushed by Hamas. Hamas took advantage of knowing Israel soldiers' protocol not to shoot during ceasefire. They ambushed his team, killed three of them, and kidnapped Hadar into the underground tunnel where they still keep him, his body, his remains as a bargaining chip to really sentence terrorists. The family has been trying unsuccessfully ever since to retrieve their son's remains and give him a proper burial, a cornerstone of the Jewish faith. The response from officials had always been the same. These are terrorists, Hamas terrorists. What can you do? We don't have any contact to those terrorists. War is war with all the consequences, but uh, capturing the dead, refusing to let me bury him. Is the lowest thing to, to do. The family has new hope thanks to a newly passed UN Security Council resolution. It says in part that when a ceasefire is initiated and a peace agreement reached, the return of hostages and the deceased must be a top priority. So for us, this is now the, the windows of opportunity to bring our son home since the United States highly involved in initiating the peace plan in our region. This resolution actually moves the responsibility to the UN state members by saying when you initiate agreements, it's your responsibility now to factor in the, the return of, of Adar. The Goldens came to the U.S. to try and build support for their case by meeting with White House officials and the UN Secretary General, who she said was optimistic. His office released a statement saying in part, the Secretary General had a private meeting with the parents of Hadar Golden. He continues to call on all parties to abide by international humanitarian law and duly inform the families of missing Israelis and Palestinians regarding the status of their loved ones. This mother feels a step closer to closure for her son, who was 23 years old and a month away from his wedding when he was killed. For us, it's put, to put a closure. It's to put a closure to the family and specifically to his twin brother and his fiancée. And we believe that your current administration can fix this wrong. Not just pray for it, not just think about us, but make it happen. Mrs. Golden says when she spoke with the U.N. Secretary General, he said Hadar's remains should be returned, quote, immediately and unconditionally. She's hoping that happens in the very near future. In Washington, Eric Phillips, CBN News. Up next, a Syrian refugee flees bombs and finds hope when we come back. Christians around the world are standing with the Israelis, but why? In CBN's free magazine, Friends of Israel, you'll discover why Christians are supporting the Jewish state, how Israel is fulfilling prophecy as a light to the nations, and ways you can pray for the people of Israel. Israel needs the support of friends like you. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Friends of Israel. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers. But even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. 
Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. A young Syrian girl and her family fled the civil war in Syria to southern Lebanon. That's where two ministries provided schooling, food, and hope. Nermeen wants to be a doctor someday, but her grade school education was cut short because of the war in Syria. I remember the good things back home, like my school and friends and all the fun we had. Then the fighting started and more and more bombs were falling every day. We left Syria after one bomb destroyed our house. We came to Lebanon to find a safe place for my children, but life here is hard for refugees. We're not allowed to have jobs, and I was sad to see Nermin losing her education. She was such a good student before. When CBN's Orphans Promise and our partner, Heart for Lebanon, met Nermin's family, we told her and her siblings they could attend our school called the Hope Center. Here we provide Syrian refugee children with a safe, calm environment where they learn science, math, Arabic, and English. The teachers really care for us and show us love. They teach us about Jesus and how much he loves us too. I want to become a doctor so I can be like Jesus and heal people. We also show the children's superbook in Arabic. <laughs> I love the Superbook stories about Jesus. Jesus came to save the world and offer his love and show the way to heaven. He did that for me. We provide Nermin's family and thousands of other refugees with large packages of food and hygiene products that last throughout the month until our next distribution. Nermin's mother now has hope for her children's future. I feel so at ease and secure since my children are being fed and they are getting their education. All the things that any mother would wish for her kids. And you have made that happen. You're helping me with my dream to be a doctor. I love you all and thank you so much. Finally, here's a plea from a Christian leader inside Syria to the church in the West. We know that you are praying for us, but this is not enough. Immediate decisions have to be taken to protect our region. Since four years, we have been living in peace and freedom. We built our churches. We lived safely with all the other communities. But now we are living under serious threat, as we have seen innocent people, including women and children, being killed, as well as the destructions of our homes and the huge wave of displacement. So I hope the right decision is taken to stop this genocide. Please do pray and speak up for these Christians under siege in northeast Syria. And pray for the leaders in the U.S. and the Middle East to make wise and godly choices. Well, that's all for this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline. <music>